The deployment of an art token is entirely permissionless, which means that anyone can go to the Reserve Protocol smart contract, deploy their own art token without needing permission from anyone else to do so. The easiest way to deploy an art token is to use the register DAP, which you can go to by navigating to register.app. Once you get to the DAP, you can scroll down on this page and find the Deploy R Token button. If you click that button, you get the uh, you get navigated to the R Token Deployment Wizard, which is basically a form that you can fill in from top to bottom. Uh, it will ask you all the necessary questions uh, regarding the R Token, and afterwards you can actually deploy it. So let's walk through these fields. The first field you have to fill in is the R Token name. Uh, which I'm just going to use test for now. And then we have to fill in the ticker. I'm also going to use test. And you'll notice that after I fill in the ticker, the staking token also automatically receives its ticker. More on this later once we get to staking. The next field we have to fill in is the mandate. Now the mandate is basically a text that serves to describe the vision or the goals of the R token and also serves to align governors on how they should govern the R token. Because it's entirely possible that after deploying the R token, you're giving away all governors rights to uh, a decentralized group of governors. And so they need some kind of mandate or a constitution to be aligned on its goals. After you filled in the mandate, the next thing to define is the primary basket. The primary basket is the initial collateral that will back your R token. The way this works is if you click on this add to basket button, you get a list of all the uh, ERC20 tokens that you can use to back your R token. You'll notice that this list is limited right now. And that is because while each ERC20 token is uh, possible to be used as collateral in an R token, uh, they need something called a collateral plugin. And a collateral plugin is basically a piece of code that anyone can write to support any ERC20 token as an R token. Uh, as R token collateral, sorry. Um, so basically, each RC20 token needs some kind of uh, plugin in order to be used as collateral. If you want to write your own collateral plugin or interested in knowing how that how that works, you can watch the video in the script in the description, which is a full tutorial on how to do that. Now, before I'm going to choose collateral tokens here. I'm going to take you back to the whiteboard and I'm going to go over some potential R token designs or collateral basket designs. And once we're done that, once we're done with that, I am going to uh, select collateral from this list. Since an R token can be backed by any set of ERC20 tokens, there's actually a lot of possibilities uh, for how an R token can look. And I wanted to, sh to share three potential designs that will help you think through them. The first is the, vola the volatile collateral tokens. Imagine an R token being backed by volatile tokens such as BTC and ETH. Well, since an R token derives its value from the weighted uh, average price of its collateral tokens, what that means is that um, if the price of these collateral tokens goes down, naturally the price of your R token will go down as well. The opposite also works if the price goes up of these collateral tokens. But it should be kept in mind that this kind of setup is probably not best for a stable coin uh, R token, but it could definitely work for an index like product. The next category is stable collateral tokens, which solves that problem because since the uh, stable coin, since the, the backing, the stable coins remain stable in price, naturally your R token will also remain stable in price. But there is a third category, which, which I think is the, the superior category, and I'll explain why. You can also use yield-bearing collateral tokens. These yield-bearing collateral tokens are tokens such as Compound USDC or Aave DAI. These tokens essentially accrue the revenue from their underlying markets in themselves, which means that they keep increasing in price uh, the more uh, borrowing fees get paid in these underlying platforms. So what does that what does that look like for an R token? Well, if you back an R token with these yield bearing stable coins, you'll get you not only get a stable price for your R token, but actually as borrowing fees get paid in these underlying markets, the value of your collateral actually increases. 
that value can then be distributed to anyone who you'd like. So you can send some uh, revenue to the art token holders themselves, which means they're now not just holding a stable coin, but they're holding a, a stable coin that also has some yield to it. Or you can uh, divert some of that revenue to the RSR stakers. And again, the RSR stakers, they stake their tokens to provide first loss uh, capital for your R token, which means that if something would happen, which is called a black swan event, something like uh, the compound platform being hacked or Aave, uh, a, a bug being exploited on Aave, well, then you have this first loss capital uh, pool, which uh, protects the R token holders. Now that we've gone through some potential uh, designs for R tokens, I'm actually going to select my uh, collateral token. In this case, I'm going to go with a yield bearing basket. So I include some AUSDC, so Aave USDC, some uh, CUSDT, which is compound USDT, and some uh, FDI, which is uh, Flux Finance DAI. I add those to my basket. And right after adding those, you can immediately see that a register calculates an estimated basket APY. This is the APY based on these collateral assets. We uh, take a 30 day trailing average and we show you what the potential revenue will be generated on top of the basket. Later on, we're gonna uh, see how that revenue can then be redirected to uh, anyone who you'd like. One more thing you'll see is that each of these tokens, once I add them to the basket, gets a weight in the basket. This weight can also be updated. So instead, uh, let's say I want some more exposure to FDI and less exposure to these tokens. What I can do is I can simply change this percentage, let's say 50%, and uh, update the other two to 25%. And now the R token will be uh, more exposed to FDI than to the other R token, to the other collateral tokens. Now that we've set up our primary basket, we can go ahead in the deployment flow. And the next thing we have to define is the emergency collateral. In the next video in this course, we're going to look into the emergency collateral, exactly what that means and how it gets deployed.